Yo, 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 what is up, future fighters? And today we got the first sneak peek for the upcoming update. This is version 5.6. And to the best of my knowledge, this will be the last update of 2019. So hopefully, Netmarble and Marvel Future Fight are going out with a bang, with a big punch. Uh, and they're starting it off with a literal warhead. So you can see the image there. Um, and this already looks like Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But then you see the Twitter post and it pretty much verbally confirms it. This Teenage Mutant will put her explosive personality to the test in the V560 update. So uh, this Teenage Mutant... Teenage, Negasonic Teenage Warhead will put her explosive personality Warhead okay so it's her it's not Sunspot it's not anybody else it's Negasonic Teenage Warhead so we know that much and that's pretty cool um, and you can see here from one of my discord users Ayad thank you so much or Admir uh, posted a sort of uh, manipulated version through Photoshop that more clearly defines who it is and you can see that it's a young girl, teenager, wearing a shirt with uh, the sort of, the arm, I guess, sort of folded back to make, like, um, whatever they're called, uh, <laughs> the cuffs, and then uh, shaved head, etc. So, it's, yeah, it's definitely Negasonic Teenage Warhead. So, what does this mean? Uh, well, usually when I make these sort of sneak peek videos, I talk about, you know, the character's backstory, the character's origin, I talk about, what, you know, other characters that they interact with, whether it's like a love interest thing, or a friendship thing, or a team-up thing. And I give other suggestions. But I want to talk about other more important things this time around. Now, we know for sure we're getting Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Negasonic Teenage Warhead, for those of you that don't know, uh, is a mutant that was invented uh, in the comic. Mean, all, all characters are invented, but she was invented quite recently. Um, I think her, her biography goes back to 2001 when she was invented by Grant Morrison um, in the new X-Men issue 115. I'm reading this off the Wikipedia page. I honestly am not the huge, I'm not the biggest Negasonic Teenage Warhead fan, so I had to go and look her up. I know her from the Deadpool movies. Um, but yeah, she's fairly new. She has less than 20 years worth of comics to, um, you know, be represented in. Um, but she's had her fair share of, um, you know, runs or sort of um, features in runs, both for the good guys and sort of for the bad guys. Not necessarily as a bad guy, but she's just, you know, she's been around the block. She's she's hung out with a lot of different mutants uh, and characters, and she's, you know, been in conflicts like the Genosha uh, massacre or um, genocide with the, with the Sentinels. She's been involved in the Hellfire Club. She's been involved in Domino's Mercs for Hire or Mercs for Money. She's also been uh, involved a little bit in the X-Men versus Inhumans conflict with the Team Mist and stuff like that. So there's quite a few different ways they could go with this. But what I want to point out more so is what this means for Marvel Future Fight. So um, I'll start off by saying that we can't be sure from this first sneak peek that this is a full-blown X-Men update because, might I remind you, in the very last update, we had sneak peeks showing off uh, Rogue's new uniform. We had sneak peeks showing off, for example, Sabretooth and the Uncanny X-Men. And some of those are X-Men, or sorry, Uncanny Avengers. Some of those are X-Men and some of those are non-X-Men or not even mutants in the case of someone like Doctor Voodoo or Vision and so on and so forth. So we don't actually know, and it was actually an it was actually partially an Agents of Atlas or yeah, Agents of Atlas update as well. So it was, it was sort of two different teams fused together into one update. So we can't assume from this that we're getting a full blown mutants only update, but we could be getting a full blown mutants only update. And so you could see characters possibly like you know Mystique or Omega Red or Mister Sinister or you know from the Hellfire Club you could see Sebastian Shaw, you could see Celine. There's a there's a whole bunch of different characters that. Um, could intersect with um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But what's more important is uh, Marvel Future Fight and the developers of the game recognizing uh, how mutant updates are perceived and how they're taken, and, and, and more at large, not just for mutant updates, but all updates. So I'll start off with you know some, some, some of the most important things when it comes to mutant updates. Increasing the cap on mutant materials. I think this is the most important thing that Netmarble and the Marvel Future Fight devs need to address because they're adding a lot of mutants, um, you know, every year and not having this cap raised. It's only been raised once. It was originally 2000 when this, when the items were introduced in March, no, in May of 2017, May or June. 
So, you know, in, in more than two years, the cap has only been raised once. It was raised from 2,000 to 3,000. I think it's more than, I think it's been more than enough time to raise it again to at least 4,000. On top of that, they need to address the bug that is still persistent when it comes to opening chests, any kind of chests, whether they're world boss chests, well, actually not world boss chests, but any sort of chest from, Dement from Danger Room. Um, that can only open to give you gear up kits or uh, X-Men materials or gold, those chests will not open if you have any of the X-Men materials capped. So you could have you could have zero Mcron crystals, zero Phoenix feathers, and you could have 3,001. Actually, you could, you could just have 3,000 Mcron shards. If you try to open your danger room chest, it will give you an error and it will not let you open the chest. And that is extremely frustrating because you could go into the material tab on your inventory. You could sell that one Mcron shard and then you could open your chest and guess what? You get more Mcron shards. This is twice as frustrating for players who are paying for the shield support because those players are paying for the shield support and part of the reward is a bonus reward in Danger Room in which you get two boxes per day instead of one. Guess what you have to do twice a day now? That's right, you have to go and sell one Phoenix Feather or one Mcron Shard. This is absolutely moronic. Some people believe there should not be a cap at all on X-Men materials. If there is going to be a cap on X-Men materials, do not slow us down and do not annoy us by constantly making us sell until we're at 2,999 or whatever the cap is minus one in order to open these chests. Just allow us to open the chests and allow us to build um, a reserve beyond that amount uh, even though we can't farm for these items using energy in missions anymore. Because once you hit the cap, if you play the mission, you won't get those materials anymore. But you can still go over the cap. As you can see, I'm over by 9 on Phoenix Feathers. You can still go over the cap by opening up chests, whether they're world boss booty boxes, there should be danger room chests, and so on and so forth, that could, com that could contain those items. Or let's say you open up the um, event shop chests that are on right now. If I were to get Phoenix Feathers or some other X-Men material from these, it would also count and go over the cap. So they really need to raise the cap. At the very least, they also need to uh, remove the bug with chests because it's super, it's super annoying um, and it's stupid. And every time there's an X-Men update, this is the first thing that comes to people's minds is fixing these persistent bugs that exist in the game. Um, so yeah, those things definitely need to be addressed when they're, even if they're just going to be adding one mutant, even if Negasonic Teenage Warhead is the only mutant that's being added with this next update. Beyond that, there's actually quite a few cool and interesting things that can come out of another X-Men and another mutant update. I know some people don't like mutant updates, but it gives Marvel Future Fight and the developers of the game a chance to finish off two more world boss ultimate stages so they gave us quicksilver and scarlet witch in the last update maybe their plan all along was to finish these off by 2019 and then maybe for the five-year anniversary in 2020 they would do something juicy and new with world boss ultimate that would be very exciting uh marvel future fight you have my heart fluttering uh and my my stomach full of butterflies imagining what could come next but yeah there's a possibility with any mutant update uh, that Apocalypse and Cable could get their glow up and get their World Boss Ultimate versions. Now, Cable already has a new uniform from the uh, was it X Force uh, update that happened, so he doesn't technically need yeah X Force. So he doesn't technically need a new uniform, but he could get one, which would be cool. Um, and then Apocalypse, he's the last mutant character in Marvel Future Fight. He's also one of the lost native tier twos, along with Adam Warlock, Odin, Supergiant, and Dormammu. These five clowns over here. But Apocalypse is the last lost mutant. He is the only mutant character in Marvel Future Fight. Drink every time I say... Uh, mutant who is not uh, you know you can't take him to level 70 you can't take him to gear 25 he's stuck at level 60 so there's a high chance that they will do that and that they will push him to level 70 and then that, that also means there's a high chance that the Marvel Future Fight devs will give us a world boss ultimate stage for Apocalypse which could mean a, like pretty you know a couple of pretty cool things we could get a new stage that we can fight we can get some value for blast uh, characters because they will have an advantage against Apocalypse right now we have 
value for speed types against Scarlet Witch, and value for uh, combat types against Quicksilver, so we'll get value for Blasts here. He could also drop another uh, Odin's Blessing. I know a lot of people have been very uh, hype and have been getting, I get like five tweets a day minimum of people getting Odin's Blessings, so I think the new drop rate is absolutely fantastic, and getting that new drop rate on another new um, Odin's Blessing, you know, removing more of them from the from the chest only and allowing us to farm them as well from World Boss would be absolutely amazing. So there's, there's always the possibility of that. Additionally, we could see possible uniforms for some pretty popular X-Men uh, who don't have uniforms yet. And there's, uh, there's a bunch to go through, uh, and they don't necessarily need buffs, but rather than looking forward and looking to the future of more characters in Marvel Future Fight, which is something I want to address towards the end of the video, we can look at characters in the game who need buffs. Like, it would be really cool, for example, if Warpath got a uniform, because he's good, but he could be even better, and he's free to play. It'd be cool if Bishop got a uniform, because he's dope, and he's a nice counter to Captain Marvel, and he could be even better against energy damage dealing characters, like stupid-ass Jean Grey. Uh, it would be really cool, for example, not that he needs it, but if Gambit got a uniform, that would be dope, because Gambit is amazing, and I love to play as Gambit. I cannot tell you how much I would love an Iceman uniform. I love Iceman. That shouldn't that shouldn't be a surprise to you. Jubilee kind of sucks, so it'd be nice if she got a bump and she would actually be useful for all the people that paid for her. Um, he's a bit too new to get a uniform, but then you have characters like Domino and Phantom X, who are a little bit closer. Especially Domino is quite close to Negasonic Teenage Warhead in some of her comics. So it'd be great to see these characters get uniforms, get buffs, and be a bit more relevant. It's especially important to note, not necessarily for Domino, although she could get a lot better because her uh, passive is really good. It's double damage with 25% guaranteed dodge. So she's, she's, you know, she could be poised to actually be quite good um, for PvP because she hits, she could hit hard and she could also uh, be annoying to kill, kind of like Spider-Man, kind of like uh, a mini or a discount Quicksilver. But for Phantom X, the important thing here, not only does he heal, he's self-healing, but we have the uh, Special Ceramic Bullets passive. 65% increased damage to mutant characters. So he would absolutely hyper dunk the Cable World Boss Ultimate Stage because he has the type advantage against Cable and he does an additional 65% damage against mutants. They don't have to be villains, it's any mutant. Uh, and then it's possible that Phantom X could super hyper Omega Dunk Jean Grey. I would love that. I would love if free to play Phantom X, uh, you know, if Charlie 13 was going around completely blasting Jean Grey's head off, uh, I would love that. I think that would be amazing. Uh, now, those are all the mutants. There's there's even more mutants that could be getting um, uniforms and, and, and buffs and reworks jug or not as, as well as with something, someone I wanted to mention and also Sentinel because there is some reference between um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Sentinel as far as the Genosian Crisis goes and the sort of wild Sentinels and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, Marvel Future Fight. Let me, let me be really honest with you for a second and let me try to echo the community's feelings. Everybody loves, deep down, everybody loves mutants. Uh, in Marvel Future Fight, but some people feel like the mutant updates don't have as much, um, they don't have as much sort of spirit, and they don't have as much sort of deep meaning behind them, because some of the characters sort of feel like throwaway characters. So, you know, most recently you have Emma Frost and her uniform, kind of trash. I don't think you guys did a good enough job going from F Marvel now to Phoenix 5. So in some people's eyes, that was just a cash grab uniform. Now, Rachel Summers is a pretty cool character. She's got some really cool animations. And honestly, her pack, her Rachel Summers training pack is not that expensive. But again, different ways of monetizing mutant characters um, can make people feel like the primary goal of introducing new mutants is making money. Also, pretty recently, we got Kid Omega. He's okay, but he's kind of just a throwaway character. Now, this, this Kid Omega situation is a little bit different, so I'll, talk, I'll, I'll touch on this in a second. But the last two examples that I wanted to give are Jubilee and Kitty Pride. They are prime examples of paywall X-Men who kind of suck. Now, they're, they don't actually suck. They're right here, next to Namor. But if you compare a Tier 2 Jubilee and a Tier 2 Kitty Pride to Namor Tier 2, or even Juggernaut Tier 2, or even Gambit Tier 2... There is a huge gap. That shouldn't be the case. All paywall characters should be at least decent. 
Jubilee is average at best. Kitty Pride is below average. So again, there's the there there raises the question of you've already introduced three you introduced four paywall mutants in one year. You started with Juggernaut, um, and then you moved on to Kitty, uh, Jubilee, and Namor. One of them is good, one of them is godly, and the other two are kind of bad. That's a 50% success rate. It's not that good. You can get better at that. You can improve that. On top of that, if you're going to be introducing so many paywall characters, why don't you buff the ones that are bad? Like Enchantress, like Carnage, like Hyperion. Like Ironheart, she's shit. Kid Kaiju, Agent Venom, Valkyrie's pretty trash. Quasar's pretty trash. Killmonger's super trash. Nadia's hyper trash. These characters could get buffs because people spent money on them. So yeah, I think that's just something that the, the community feels. But uh, as far as characters like Kid Omega goes, I do think that some uh, of some members of the community, while they might not feel like it's a cash grab, they might feel like Negasonic Teenage Warhead is appealing to fans of the character, is appealing to fans of mutants like me, but ultimately is not going to have an impact in Marvel Future Fight. On the one hand, it would be kind of weird and, and, and sudden and sort of power creep and, and pay to win type thing if Negasonic Teenage Warhead comes to Marvel Future Fight and she's godly and she's as good as Jean Grey. Just, you know, randomly, boom, here you go. Here's the new best thing and it's, and it's Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But Marvel Future Fight devs, you're not like that. You're not going to do that. Okay, so then she's not going to be that strong. So she's going to be like Kid Omega or like Jubilee. And then some people will say, well, what's the point? And so that issue lends itself or that issue is basically not about them being mutants but more about where do we use these characters where am i supposed to use negasonic teenage warhead i can't use her in danger room not going to use her in giant boss raid not going to use her in world boss ultimate unless she's godly and like i explained she's probably not going to be godly so i'm going to use negasonic teenage warhead in shadowland here's the thing that Mar uh, marvel future fight net marvel we don't need any more Shadowland characters. Thank you so much for the invitation, but not now. So yeah, I just wanted to say that as well. I do think that the X-Men and the, the, the mutant updates do get a little bit of unfair uh, sort of hate. And, and I think the reaction from some members of the community is a bit more negative than it needs to be. But on the other hand, I can understand that the mutants are super popular, but if they're not introduced to the game in a way that makes them relevant, or if they're not introduced to the game with a game mode that is relevant, uh, then it does feel a bit empty at the end of the day. If they don't have a place in the meta, they just become another throwaway Shadowland character. So we do want ultimately a new game mode a fresh game mode that makes each one of these sort of b tier or b list characters um useful the way that they were two years ago when shadowland was first introduced and then when we got new characters we were actually excited because the game was much smaller so we had you know 130 characters or 120 so it's like, oh man, we're getting a new Shadowland character. That's dope. Maybe this character will have an interesting interaction or we'll be able to do this, this really difficult stage or this rumble or whatever. Now we have 200 characters. We don't, we don't need anyone else for Shadowland. So we need an upgrade to an existing game mode. We need a major upgrade to an existing game mode. Or we need a new game mode that can take advantage of this behemoth of a roster. And that doesn't just go for all, that just doesn't just go for X-Men mutant updates. It goes for all updates. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Maybe I went a little bit too far with uh, some of what I said, but I think this uh, image kind of uh, illustrates things in a pretty humorous way uh, and sort of summarizes part of what I said. So yeah, maybe you got to laugh there at the end. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hit me up on Discord, Twitter, etc. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.